Hi folks, we're just thinking about the question, is the Bible full of contradictions? There are many people, whether Christian and non-Christian, who are struggling with this question. They struggle and they seem to find contradictions in the Bible and therefore they abandon Christianity. In 1 Peter 3.15 it says, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. There the Apostle Peter is saying he's not anti-intellectual, he wants people to have answers to their questions. Answers to these questions would be the Encyclopedia of Bible Di Difficulties by Gleason Archer, Zondran Publishing House, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And you can also go on to Calm, um, calm.org Bible full of contradictions and look at Bible difficulties where any Bible difficulties can be answered. Um, so those are just a couple of resources. You can also go to uh, John Frame's website and on John Frame's website there are two books on looking at the Bible in inerrancy and the Gospels and inerrancy by Poitras. Uh, and Poitras does two excellent academic books on this issue. Um, so those are just a few resources that you can look to, but I'll just unpack one or two issues that people bring up. For example, people will bring up the Genesis addiction in Genesis 1 and 2, but they don't understand the genre of the literature, and this is the key. Ask yourself, what is the nature of the literature that you're reading and if you ask that question and answer it and find out the answer, you'll often find um, the answer to your question about the Bible difficulty. The second question that you need to a ask is, what is this whole book about? How do I look at the verse that I'm looking at in the context of the whole book? If you do this, you will find that many of your issues are dealt with. So in Genesis 1 and 2, skeptics will say, oh, there's contradictions in um in, in, that, in those chapters concerning the creation account. But they forget to look at how the chapters are being presented. If you look at chapter 1, it's looking at it from a wide camera angle. If you look at chapter 2, it's as if the camera then goes in and you realize the difference between the wide angle and the zooming in angle of the chapters, you will say there's a contradiction. But if you realize there is a difference between a wide-angle look of creation that was in Genesis 1 and a detailed, in up-close understanding of Genesis account in chapter 2. If you don't realize that, you'll get into difficulties. Most even scholars uh, can get themselves into difficulties by not realizing that simple way of looking at those chapters. Another example is the four Gospels. This is an area that I'm quite uh, familiar with and trained in. You will find that um, scholars and, and in debates like Bart Ehrman will bring out so-called contradiction in the Gospels. Again, ask the big questions. Once you ask the big questions, you begin to resolve what is the nature of the book. If you understand that the Gospel of Matthew was written for Jews, the Gospel of Mark was for Gentiles, the Gospel of Luke was for Gentiles, and the Gospel of John was written to show the high Christology of Christ. Once you realize the purpose of each book, then you have a context to understand the verses. So for example, each writer will give you information that was specifically to try and highlight the main theme of the book. If you don't understand that, you will get into a mess if you try to understand uh, the so-called contradictions in the Gospels. Secondly, um, there are not contradictions, but it, 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 I forgot the name now, but it, it's um, telescoping. Sometimes one writer of the Gospel will can hours or days into a, sh into a short unit, of a, a literary unit, and it gives the impression that maybe four events happened in a day, but you don't realize the person is what is called telescoping. This is a typical way ancient historians wrote. So, for example, um, 
you will get um, in the Gospels, one Gospel will say two angels, one ang another Gospel will say one angel, another angel, another writer will say one man. Notice they're not saying only two angels, only one man, only one angel. They're just picking the information that they want to give for their account. So they're not a contradiction. So there's telescoping, there is selective information. Um, often a, a contradiction can be down to not having the original Greek in your hand. Sometimes it's best to check to get a Greek dictionary or a Greek interlinear or a Hebrew interlinear and check what the actual Hebrew and Greek word is. If you do that, that will resolve a lot of so-called contradictions. Um, these are just some of the basic words to deal with. Always remember the big picture. The big picture is the Bible was written over 2,000 years. It was written, uh, is it, there's over 60 odd books and there are many many writers, about 40 different writers from different cultures, different backgrounds and yet all these books and all these writers have one theme and that's Jesus Christ. That's kind of like the equivalent of you going into your library picking out books at random over the span of 2000 years that they've been written so you go and get a novel by Dickens, a poem by, by Thomas a book written by some key fit expert today, uh, a book written on physics a hundred years ago, uh, etc. You just pick all these books at random from a massive library, put them all together, and they all end up having the theme of strawberries and cream. What chances would that be? That strawberries and cream are at the center of all these books that you've randomly picked. But that's what's at stake here. Over 2,000 years, all these books put them together. And what do you get? You get one consistent theme, and that is Jesus Christ. That is amazing. So, whenever you get bogged down with the details of this contradiction or that contradiction, always remember the big picture of the Bible. Secondly, ask yourself what is the nature of the literature that I'm reading? Very often, people don't realize, even scholars don't realize the reading. So for example most people don't realize that the Gospels are ancient biography written with eyewitness material. They were written in specific ways ancient writers wrote and if you don't understand those ways you're going to be a bad exegete, a bad expounder of the Bible. So I hope this has been a help to you look at the books that I've recommend to you, look at the resources uh, there's a series by John MacArthur on the inspiration of the Bible go to Grace to You and look at his long series on the inspiration of the Bible that will be a great blessing to you also look at R.C. Sproul's series on the Bible about canon and inerrancy etc and that will be a great blessing to you so I hope this has been an encouragement to you and God bless you